Hey friends, welcome to Canadian Cutting Edge, and today we're taking a look at this beautiful little knife by Sanrem Yu. This is one of their newer knives, new for 2020. We've got D2 steel, we've got uh, G10 handle scales. It comes in this uh, uh, <laughs> baby poop brown with stonewash. <laughs> I actually like this color quite a lot. Or you can get it with black G10 and a satin finish. When I started doing the research to actually produce the video, I went back to where I bought this, but I only noticed now that they've got the 9202, which is the same knife handle, same steel, same cutting edge and everything, but a different blade style. So the thumb riser comes up a little bit more before the clip point. I'm thinking. Well, I'd have to have it in my hand, but I'm thinking I might like the 9202 more than the 9201. But they're identical in every other way except for, you know, this section right here. <laughs> the cutting edge, bevel, handle, everything's the same. So you take your pick which one you want. And they're both available in the same two color schemes. If you're interested in a knife like this, stick around. The full review is coming right now. I'll look at this thing up close now. Bandits walking around me, knocking stuff over. We've got their lock. It's basically the access lock, but they're calling it the Ambi lock. And it works quite well. Look at that blade. I love that black acid wash, stone wash. Especially on D2 steel, it helps protect that steel from corrosion. D2 is pretty corrosion resistant to start with, but it's not quite a stainless steel. They did quite a good job sharpening this as well. Almost the same angle all the way along, which is a little bit at the last, a uh, little over half of an inch or about half an inch where, you know, it's a little bit steeper. The rest of it is within 0.2 of degree all the way along, and both sides are even. So this knife, at least this specific one, was sharpened very well. Let's do a size comparison. We like to compare it to the Ontario Rat 1. A little bit smaller than the Ontario Rat, but not by an awful lot. Let's uh, line up the uh, handle size. The grip size is fairly close. The uh, blade length fairly close. The cutting edge length, you actually have a little bit more on the uh, San Ren Mew. So look at that beautiful knife. This nice big hole here, it's got uh, little steps in it instead of just being a straight hole. So there's a little bit of uh, grippiness in there. And that's just on this top edge here. That's so you can get your finger in there to do the flicking. Um, the spring's just a little bit too strong for me to, you know, flick it just using my finger. It's close though. See that? It's getting pretty close. Sometimes I get it, but sometimes I get it, but usually not. I got to use a little bit of wrist action and it opens up just fine. Check out that clip point blade. I think she's so beautiful. A little bit of a swedge in here, a flat section. There's San Remus lo new logo. Stay ready for more in really tiny words right there. With uh, San Ramu being the uh, sort of Englishized way of saying the brand's name, you know, it's a Chinese brand name, of course. So they're restricted with the letters SRM, and they found a pretty good little catchphrase, stay ready for more. <laughs> Quite like that. G10 handle scales. They've got some grip on them. There's texture here from milled lines that way, and then typical texture on a surface here, on this flat surface that G10 has. Uh, nicely milled chamfer in here and along all these edges. Quite well done. Backspacer made it of G10 as well. It uh, comes up a little bit back here where the G10 stays down. And then you've got a nice open lanyard hole there. 
one of the other good features that they put on here, uh, the way they did the sharpness toil here, it makes it really easy to sharpen this knife right to the end without messing up anything on the plunge. Very, very well done. So now let's see how well the pocket clip works. It does have button screws right there. And there's not, you know, a super generous amount of space. And I prefer it when the pocket clips don't go too far out from the uh, handle of the uh, knife. So let's see how well those work. Will those uh, button screws get in the way or will they not get in the way? First off, the uh, pocket clip wants to ride over, even though it doesn't have a flat section there. And look at that, it just slides in right away. Even this thicker part of the denim pocket, I didn't have it catch once, not once. Just a little bit of that knife sticking out there. If you buy the black version, I think the pocket clip will be just sort of a satin finish, so a little bit brighter. It doesn't stand out and grab your attention, which is quite nice. And uh, now it's time to take this thing apart and show you the insides. So here we have it mostly taken apart. Uh, I took off the uh, pocket clip as well. You see a little bit of grease oil in here. Well, here's the oil. There's a little bit of grease right here on both sides, right along the uh, omni and skeletonizing to uh, help keep the thing nice and light. There you can see. That's the uh, very thin phosphor bronze washer. It's next to the blade. And then inside here, you can just see the edge of it right there, that there is a black washer there too. So let's pull that guy out. Nice and thin washer, and even thinner phosphor bronze. Those are on both sides, so you've got four washers. That's why the action can be so smooth. So I'm not going to show you how am I putting it back together. Just trust me that I'll get it back together. At least I hope I will. <laughs> on this side, you've got the model number 9201-GW. And that's for this combination. It says D2 right there. And then right here, there's the date. Uh, the triangle and the position of it. Uh, this is the last year for that uh, uh, triangle. So starting 2021, they're going to have a different symbol there. And the month 08 is the month that it was made. So this was made just in August. <laughs> this year. The handle, you've got little uh, rings here that have been anodized a blue, but it doesn't really look like a bright blue or anything. It does, it looks nice. But you've got the logo there again, but this time it's the triangle logo, SRM. So you've got the logo here, you've got the logo here, and you've got the logo here. Thankfully they didn't put it here. Sandra Mute, that's a little too much. Please put your logo once on your uh, knife. We already know that it's a Sandra Mew knife because that's what we wanted to buy. So you've already got our attention. And yes, when we have a good knife, we will tell our friends. And uh, let's go over all of the sizes, the, the dimensions, weights, stuff like that, sharpness, all those details. D2, uh, from what I could see on Sandra Mew's website, their target. Um, Hardness here is about 59 to 60 on the Rockwell hardness scale. That's a good hardness for D2. If you go too much harder, then the edge is brittle and it might chip a little easier. On the internet, you might hear people say D2 is chippy, and it does happen if it's too hard. But the same thing is true of every single knife steel. If you make it too hard, it's going to be chippy. The weight of this knife, 97 grams. 3.4 ounces, nice and light. The factory sharpness, and it's measured, I measured it about an inch up and then again over here. And I always uh, measure the sharpness three times and then I average those three numbers, unless one of the numbers is way out from the others. And then I measure it a fourth time <laughs> and I throw out the one that's way out, either very sharper or very duller. Now it's time for the lengths, the cutting edge length, and the tip to the G10 here, so the blade length, cutting edge length, they're the same. 
8.94 centimeters, 3.519 inches. The thickness of the blade along these flat sections in the ricasso, so the how thick of a steel they started with, 3.07 millimeters, 0.121. That's just under an eighth of an inch. The blade depth, this measurement here, just before the clip starts. That's about an inch along the uh, blade edge. 2.79 centimeters, 1.098 of an inch. The thickness of the edge behind the grind is 0.45 millimeters, which is 17 and a half thousandths of an inch. That's quite thin. So this knife's got a lot of life in it before it gets, you know, like to 25 to 30 thousandths of an inch. I don't like steel edges over 30 thousandths. You know, 25 is already a bit of a stretch, but 30 is just too much. Uh, now for the grind angles. Like I said, the grind angles are very close. 17.8 degrees, 17.9 degrees. And just a little bit steeper here, right close to the uh, sharpness toil. It was closer to 19 degrees on both sides. Very even. Uh, this is about the best sharpening I've got yet on a knife. And on a knife on this price point, usually under $50, you don't get them sharpened this well. So they did a great job. Now for the handle specs, the handle length is 11.97 centimeters, 4.712 inches. The grip area, it's about 10 centimeters, about four inches. So plenty of grip area. The handle thickness, not counting the pocket clip, 1.23 centimeters, 0.484 of an inch. The handle depth, it's biggest right up here, 3.07 centimeters, 1.208 of an inch. When the knife is closed, the biggest spot's right there, 3.48 centimeters, 1.37 inches. So it fits very well in pockets. And the total length of this knife, when the blade is deployed tip to tail, 19.6 centimeters, 7.7165 inches. So basically seven and three quarter inches with a three and a half inch blade. That's a very good um, ratio. And the balance point on the knife is right there. Not bad at all. Right where you'd like it. How much does this knife cost? Like I said, I paid $30 for it on AliExpress a month and a half ago or so. This knife, I, mean, I plan on keeping. I won't be letting uh, the Patreon winner choose this one. At least I don't think I will. If they do choose it, I'll just buy another one. <laughs> um, some knives you just really want to keep forever, don't you? This is one of those knives that I think I want to keep for the long term. I like washers. Action's good. Feels good in the hand. Oh, I didn't show you the grip. Uh, this section in here is not too big. If it was a little bit bigger, it would be too big. But right now, I can do the grip where I put my index finger back in here, and the knife's got a lot of reach, and that's very comfortable, or even a fist grip. Or I can go up to here, and that's just as comfortable. Uh, the reverse grip, thumb goes along this edge right here, and that's comfortable as well. Even a pull grip reverse is comfortable uh, due to this angle right in there. So I like this knife for a lot of things. It's light, comfortable. Uh, it's not super showy. One of the other things I wanted to show you, uh, screws. Those are recessed back in here. That's quite nice. Uh, the grip points right here, they stick out just a little bit, which is quite nice. And uh, it's... It's a knife I really enjoy. Thank you to my Patreon supporters. Uh, this is probably the last video uh, before the end of the month. So, uh, hey, it's almost giveaway time for you guys. I appreciate your support an awful lot. Thank you for liking, sharing, commenting, subscribing. Remember, friends, always cut towards your chum, not your thumb. Bye for now.